everybody and welcome. This is the 2022 Kia Carnival SX and it's Kia's multi-purpose vehicle. Don't call it a minivan, but I'm going to. <laughs> this is pretty great. Now, I am not a minivan fan. I said a long time ago and I wrote this down on a goal sheet that I had when I was young that I would never own a minivan. Well, after spending a week with this and putting about 300 miles on it, I like it. <laughs> so let me show you around. I'll give you an exterior tour, an interior tour, and also take you for a quick drive and show you what it's like. But if you're looking for one of the best family hauling vehicles on the market today for the money, the Kia Carnival SX is hard to beat. Coming into the Kia Carnival's interior, you're immediately struck with just how nice and well thought out is it is. You've got beautiful contrasting colors with the leather. You have the well thought out speaker guards that are plastic that you can easily wash off because you know they're gonna get dirty with the kids. You have this great leather that is ventilated and heated in the front two captain's chairs. And it looks really nice. I mean, this is a standout interior as far as minivans go. Oh wait, did I say that? I meant multi-purpose vehicle. <laughs> so sitting down, you're treated to some like really wonderful gauges. And I don't know if you can really tell, but this little display console is very upright. And it's almost, <laughs> I'm not saying it is, but it's almost like Bentley or Rolls-Royce-esque, which is kind of cool. Uh, just to, kind of has that vibe to it with them being so upright and with, uh, with the uh, gauges the way that they are. But anyway, uh, it's kind of typical Kia, Hyundai, you know, uh, displays. You've got a nice center screen right here. Um, my only complaint about this is that you don't have, you kind of have this ledge down here where you can rest your finger, but it's kind of far to reach if you, <laughs> if you don't have huge hands like, like me, my hands are small. But uh, like the Telluride has a nice little ledge you kind of rest on like right here and then you can put up there. But, um, you know, not a big deal, but you do have this nice wood and you have these nicely integrated vents along the way, which are really cool. And coming down to the center stack, you have a very nice display. This piano black does scratch really easily as all piano black does, but um, I thought initially that this right here were buttons or like a lever, but they're not. Uh, it's just simply, you know, um, touch. And sometimes it's a little hard to, you know, actually doing anything or I prefer, you know, actual buttons, but it looks nice. Like there's no denying it looks good. You also have uh, wireless charging, USB, Apple CarPlay, no wireless Apple CarPlay at least yet. You've got different drive modes. You've got the parking brake, electronic parking brake. You've got heated and ventilated seats there. You also have, I think this is pretty cool, this little slot where you can put your wallet or you could put your phone. Uh, you got your two cup holders, tons of room up here for the passenger and the driver. And uh, I really like the steering wheel also. I actually think that the steering wheel's a nicer design than the one in our Telluride. We own a Kia Telluride SX, similar trim to this one, but I prefer the steering wheel in this. Coming into the back, the second row, just like with any van or multi-purpose vehicle. You just pull the lever and it slides right back. You also have a nice button right here for parents and for kids even. You can just press that, it'll close the door as well. You also have two buttons on the remote, which you can press, which will open up the doors before you even get in. So as you can see, even with two car seats back here and that middle seat folded back, the kids have a ton of room and uh, it's pretty impressive. You also have an outlet there, two outlets there, a USB uh, charger there, and you can move the seat back right there on those controls. You also have a USB over here on this seat. Um, one thing that I do not like is these screens, and this was not a good idea. Um, I mean, these things, I mean, you know kids are gonna kick them, and also with carpool, getting in and out kids, you know, with their backpacks, they're gonna snag, and these things are just gonna break and come off. I don't think that was a good move by Kia, and I would recommend not getting that option uh, if you're gonna be having, you know, kids in the back seat. 
If it's adults you're gonna be putting in the back seat, uh, there's a ton of room as well. And me sitting behind myself, I'm five foot nine. I have acres of foot room. I mean, just look at that. I mean, with my legs upright like that, I probably have almost a foot. You know, this is almost like F-150 levels of leg room back here. And of course, you can adjust the seat forward. If I can find the lever, where did it go? Oh, it's down there. It's way down there in case you're curious. Pull that, you can slide it way up if you need to. And again, all the way back. Oops, oh, let's try it again, all the way back. <laughs> so yeah, tons of room. And you know, it'd be same over here in that, uh, you know, second seat as well. With that middle seat folded up, you can see again, tons of space, even for that middle passenger. And you also can adjust even just that middle seat if needs be. I mean, it's totally just customizable. It's really cool. Uh, like I said, I mean, this carnival is tough to beat for a family hauling vehicle. <laughs> you also, I'll show you this in just a minute. You've got a camera back here, which is kind of crazy. You can turn it on and you can see the backseat occupants up there on the screen, kind of like in night vision mode at night. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. It's actually kind of cool. As far as the rear cargo space goes and the third row, well, with that third row folded flat, the cargo space is, is huge. It's so big. You could put tons of stuff back there. You could probably even sleep back there. You could, I mean, just with that second row, if you only have two kids, maybe three if one's willing to stay in that third, you could load up weeks worth of stuff back here. Now, to make the third row come up here, it's really easy. All you do is just simply pull this. That goes forward like that. And then you just pull this. After that latches, there you go. You can just do those two, leave that one down. Or why don't we go for that one too? Pull it back and then up, pull this latch. And boom, and you've still got tons of space. It's crazy. You could stack up so many groceries and like enough there for like a little weekend trip, maybe for the family, but pretty impressive Kia. Now to get to the third row, it's also really easy. Not quite as easy as our Telluride, but just pull this lever, slides forward. We've got a good amount of room to get back there. This is folded up because it was um, back, you know, on the cover when the third row is folded flat. So crawl back here and uh, pull the seat back. And it's not bad. Not amazing, but not bad. I mean, these are all the way back. So if the second row were slid forward at all, uh, you'd have a pretty good amount of room. I don't know if you'd want to throw three people across back here, but you definitely have enough for at least two, especially, again, they still have so much room up there. Make, make those guys slide up. Getting out, also easy. Just slide it forward and climb out. Boom. So I hate to just read a spec sheet to you, but there's enough in here that it's pretty impressive that I need to share. Uh, specifically on here, I mean, best in class passenger room and space for up to eight occupants, best in class cargo room, even more than the Chevy Suburban. Uh, it's the 3.5 liter V6, the eight speed automatic, 290 horsepower, 262 foot pounds of torque. That's best in class. Um, you know, competes with uh, the likes of the other minivans like Odysseys and Siennas, but there's tons of standard safety features, lots of good tech, and it works well. We have a lot of the same in our Telluride. Um, 
you know, competing against the Kia Carnival, or sorry, no, Chrysler Pacifica, Chrysler Voyager, Honda Odyssey, Toyota Sienna, mainly the Toyota, Honda Odyssey and Toyota Sienna. And um, I would absolutely say that if you have not considered the Carnival uh, for your next family multi-purpose vehicle, you should. Taking a look at the window sticker here, you can see that this is mostly fully loaded and all in your below 43 grand, which is pretty impressive. Uh, rated 19 in the city, 26 on the highway. I probably got about 20, a lot of city driving, but not bad. My Telluride gets worse, but this is front wheel drive only, not all wheel drive. But you can see here, tons of great standard features. The Kia famous warranty. And then with the SX, you get a lot of cool stuff like surround view monitor, dual screen rear entertainment system, which again, cool, but ah, makes me nervous. I'd rather just have some iPads back there for the kids. Um, you know, collision avoidance, memories driver seat, uh, memory driver seat. Um, anyway, pretty cool. The ceramic silver paint, it almost looks like our wolf gray on the uh, Telluride that we have, but I guess it's different. But uh, anyway, for less than 43 grand, this is a ton of value and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It's been a great week here at the Kia Carnival. I'm gonna miss it. It's pretty darn competitive with the Telluride. It is more spacious. And uh, if you're considering the two, I'd go give both a drive and see what works best for your family. But uh, let's go take it out for a drive now and I'll give you my final impressions after a week of driving. All right, so setting out in the 2022 Kia Telluride SX. <laughs> uh, so a little bit about me. I, I am not a van person. <laughs> I actually said a long time ago, I remember I wrote this like life list of goals and one of my goals was to never own a minivan. <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't say that I am a minivan fan, but if you're going by Kia's nomenclature, <laughs> this isn't a minivan either. This is a multi-purpose vehicle. <laughs> and uh, I am a fan of a multi-purpose vehicle, the Kia Carnival. This is a cool car. And I never thought I would hear myself say those words uh, about a minivan. Don't tell Kia that I said that, but uh, <laughs> this multi-purpose vehicle is kind of awesome, actually. It's really well done. Uh, just like just like a lot of the things that Kia's doing right now. And I mean, I I own a Kia Telluride, so, which is, you know, closely related to this. It's even the uh, very similar color. Uh, but this is cool. There's a lot of really cool features that I could spend 20 minutes talking about, but uh, suffice it to say, I've enjoyed my time in this carnival quite a bit. It's so comfortable, it's luxurious, it's laid out so, it's just so cool. Like this upright dash uh, is, it looks classy. I mean, it looks elegant. It, it, almost, it almost looks like Bentley or Rolls Royce-esque. Like it's just, and I know it's not, but like just the, how it's so upright and the font for the dials and stuff. It looks, it looks good. It looks good. Anyway, I don't, I just, I almost don't know what to say because I never thought I'd hear myself saying these words. And, uh, but here we are. And the thing about the carnival is that it looks really good. It looks way better than any other minivan out on the road today, uh, inside and out. It just looks good. Um, driving it is, really pleasant. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I, uh, I'm i a big fan of the Telluride. I mean, so much so that we bought one 
and uh, you know, I gotta say, I think that the, <laughs> this feels so weird to say, the carnival, I think, puts power down better than the Telluride. I don't know what, what it is about the Telluride, and sorry, a little rant for a second, but like, I don't know what it is about the Telluride, but the engine and the transmission have never felt like they've synced up very well in the Telluride. I feel like I'm always pushing, like put, putting my foot in it to get the power I want. And then it like will shift and then it'll act like it doesn't want to shift. And then it shifts really early and keeps the RPM super low. The tuning on the Telluride has got to change, but it's not the same in this carnival. It's really great. Like, I feel like I always have the power that I want and the, and the transmission, like, it's predictable. Whereas with the Telluride, sometimes I really, I don't know what it's going to do. It's great on the highway, but, like, around town, um, you know, it's a little unpredictable. But the Carnival's been great. Of course, you've got the sliding doors, which are fantastic for kids. You know, we can load them up, go to church, park in a parking space right next to two other cars. And they're not gonna ding them because those doors are awesome. Uh, you can hit the remote and just boom, it'll open the doors before you even get to the car. It's great. It's like this thing for for family. <sighs> you know, there's really not very many vehicles that can do a better job hauling a family around. Uh, the, the thing that I've always had issue with the vans, though, and same thing with this one is that with the third row up, there's still just not that much room behind the third seats. You still gotta throw, like for road trips, you still gotta put on a third row, or not a third row, uh, a rooftop carrier, and uh, you know, which I hate, that just kills your gas mileage and stuff. So, but for like around town and carpool and everything, like, it's a pretty fantastic family hauler. It's really tough to beat. And I mean, with that third row folded flat back there, and just these two captain's chairs in the second row up, it's like, it's downright cavernous back there. You can put so much stuff, like crazy. You can pile that up and go forever. Now the carnival is not all wheel drive, it's two wheel drive, but you know, throw some snow tires on it if you're in a snowy area. Tires make all the difference anyway. All wheel drive is a great bonus, but it's really just about the tires. So throw some snow tires on it, you're gonna be fine. Um, uh, a couple things, my two main complaints about the Telluride, not the Telluride, the Carnival. Well, three. I don't know if the Carnival is the best name. It's kind of weird. I don't know if it's Carnival or Carnival. I don't know. I don't know why they picked that name. It's kind of weird, but whatever. So besides that, no heated steering wheel in the SX, which is the top, top, top of the trims. It gets you all this other kind of cool stuff. It even gets you ventilated front seats, which is great but no heated steering wheel. That is mind-boggling to me, like for the money. But you're still not paying very much money. This one, like, all loaded up was like just under 43 grand, which I feel is pretty great. You consider you get a Toyota Sienna, and I understand it's a hybrid and all of that, it's Toyota, whatever, but still, you're not, you're not that far off, and you get a lot less. This is all loaded up. You still don't get a heated steering wheel. I drove into work this morning, it was 18 degrees, and my hands were frozen, and so, I don't know why, it's a pretty inexpensive thing to add. I don't know why, you know, if this is especially catering to like families and moms, especially, I'm sorry, just moms. <laughs> I would think they would want heated steering wheel. Like, even my wife was like, yeah, it's a deal breaker for me. We've been so spoiled with the heated steering wheel and the Telluride that it's like, yeah, I'm not even gonna consider a car without one now, because it's so nice. And like, especially, you know, where this is, you'd imagine that a lot of like moms probably are gonna be driving the carpool around early morning, and it's cold, whatever. You're gonna want like a heated steering wheel. So I don't know why that's missing. Kind of a kind of a major bummer. On honest, like honestly, if I was in the market for a van, I would probably still pick this over the others. Although the new Sienna is really cool and it gets great gas mileage too. Uh, but the he lack of a heated steering wheel, it, it is almost a deal breaker for me. In fact, it might be for my wife. I, yeah. The other thing is this one has um, screens mounted on the back of the two front captain's chairs here for the kids. And that I think has got to be like, the, I'm sorry, I just have to say it. I think that's a horrible idea. 
for kids. I mean, I will just admit, my kid, my daughter, uh, you know, driving around in here, uh, she she kicked she kicked it a few times. And it was like, Mary, don't don't kick the don't kick the screen. This is in our car, you know. But little kids are just gonna kick that screen. And like, if you've got kids in carpool come in and out of here all the time, someone's backpack is gonna snag on that thing and just rip it off. And so, uh, you know, cool, cool, cool for the kids to have screens, whatever. But I think if I was buying, I definitely wouldn't get the screens if it was an option, uh, which I believe it is. And I would just, you know, if you want screens, whatever, here's your iPad, like hold it in your lap, or here's like, a, you can even buy off Amazon like an iPad holder. I mean, there's charging mounts right here in the seat, which is really cool. I don't know why they felt the need. I mean, it's a nice idea, nice gesture, I get it, but like having screens that are mounted, I think it's just bad. Like, it's just, they're gonna break, they're gonna get ripped off, they're gonna get kicked, and they're gonna be out of date too. Like, I think kids, let's just get them iPads, you know? But, uh, and stay in lane. <laughs> so, anyway, those are like the main complaints. Um, other than that, like, I, I genuinely have enjoyed riding and driving in this. So, this thing is wide. Like, it's wider than a Taylor ride, and you feel it. Sometimes parking is like, oh, am I in lines? But yeah, you're in lines. It's not that wide. And then, uh, you know, plenty of room back there for the kids. Tons of space, which is awesome. I mean, you can move each seat around. Like, you can do, like, a Captain Kirk chair back there in the third row. Like... This thing, you can make it into anything you want. And it's like configurable, customizable, it's comfortable, these seats are great, haven't tried out the ventilation. My only other minor complaint, it's not a huge complaint, but like, uh, you know, to turn up like the fan speed and stuff, it's a touch, it's like a touch button, touch screen down here. And sometimes it's like, am I touching it? Is it going up? I don't really know. I still prefer like tac tactile buttons where, you know, I can feel it and I know what I'm doing. Anyway, that's that's minor, it's not a big deal. But overall, guys, this is a fantastic van. And I've said this a couple times already, but if you are not checking out the new stuff from Kia and Hyundai, you need to. Um, it's legitimately really good. And here I am, an anti-van guy. <laughs> I, I just personally don't want to drive one. But here I am. I'm telling you, as a person who said they would never own a minivan, I'm here to say this is a great van. It's a great vehicle, period. It's comfortable, it's easy for the kids, it's luxurious, it's designed so well, like it doesn't look like any other van out there. It, it doesn't even really look like a van. And uh, like the dash here, the screens, like the interface is easy to use. Um, Wish it had Apple, you know, wireless, wireless Apple Car. Has it wired? But um, you know, it's got a little slot here. You can put your phone in to hold it, and uh, wireless charging. I mean, for 42, seven, 42 grand, seven hundred. Uh, I don't know if you can buy, find a better family hauler. You know, if you're okay, throw it on a rooftop carrier. If you've got a ton of kids, you want a road trip. If you're okay without the heated steering wheel on the SX, if you're okay, you know, with some of the touch buttons or whatever, and not having all-wheel drive, uh, seriously, I don't, I don't know if you're gonna find that many better. If you're, you know, of course, if you're, if you're looking at a van, you're not totally interested in going off-road and stuff. So, we just want something to haul the family, go to carpool, go to the grocery store, just bum around town. Uh, yes, yeah. this is a great choice, and it looks cool. The paint's awesome. Uh, you just heard me say it. <laughs> I hope my posterity sees that. I said a van looks cool. And there's a new brand new Bronco on that track. Woo hoo, that yeah, looks cool too. I would love one of those. Uh, anyway, Kia, thank you so much for sending this over. I've really enjoyed it. Um, again, uh, it's just been a lot of fun. And uh, if you're considering a van, and you're kind of like stuck in the Toyota Sienna or Honda Odyssey mindset, uh, you need to give the carnival a chance. I think you'll find you're getting a ton of value for your price, and uh, I think you're gonna be pretty happy. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I 
feel dumb always saying this, but if you wouldn't mind just liking this video and subscribing, it'd be a huge help. And uh, I really do appreciate it. And uh, it's motivating for me to keep this stuff going. So anyway, have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later. See you.